working on a good quality Scotch return tube boiler, this is part three. Cladding the other side of the boiler and fitting the fiddly bits, followed by sanding and applying the first coat of varnish. In this video I'm going to make some shortcuts. I don't want you to see exactly the same as what you've already seen in the last one. Cladding a boiler is a very straightforward process. It only gets complicated and not very complicated when you need to do this. I've cut one end of this mahogany strip to fit around the block where the water gauge fits. It's quite a tight fit so I'm tapping it into position. This mahogany strip is very straightforward, it just needs to be a bit shorter. And the third mahogany strip around the water gauge block is very similar to the first. It just needed cutting to fit around the block. Cutting this mahogany strip around the check valve bush was a little bit more complicated. As before I used my Proxon motor tool which is bench mounted, but this time it's fitted with a sanding drum which allowed me to cut out the shape to fit around the bush as shown here. I also used the sanding drum to shape the end of a shorter piece of mahogany to fit neatly around the check valve bush. All of this really is a bit pointless because the four main bushes on this boiler all have covers. But that's not the point, just because the things are covered up doesn't mean you don't still have to do the job properly. Fitting of the rest of the mahogany strips was exactly as I showed in the last video. And here is the boiler with them all in place. Apart from the fiddly bits at the top that are all covered by a long metal strip. The procedure is simple. First of all I shape the end of a piece of mahogany strip. And then, after I check that the part fits perfectly around the bush, I mark it with a pencil and cut it off on the bandsaw. And then using some super glue or cyanoacrylate adhesive, I stick it in place like the others. You will notice that this cladding has been applied over the top of two holes which form the inlet and outlet to the coil superheater in the smoke box. Once all the mahogany is fitted, rubbed down and the first coat of varnish is in place, I will open up these holes using a drill from the inside. My small Proxon 90 degree angle drill will be perfect for this job. I don't have a sponsorship deal with Proxon, but I must admit that this 90 degree angle drill is really useful. When I fit the piece of mahogany strip on the other side, can you see that there's a gap in the middle? This is a little bit odd. As before, once I shaped the end, I marked it with a pencil, cut it off on the bandsaw, and then stuck it onto the boiler. I would just like to mention that if I wasn't going to fit the original strip of metal on the top, I wouldn't have done it quite like this. I would have fitted the first piece of mahogany strip, then I would have continued to go all the way round the boiler from the first piece of wood, not start again at the other side of the bushes. This is not a problem, I've made an infill piece which I had to shape on the belt sander and now I'm cutting off the surplus. But this part of the boiler is in a really prominent position, so if it wasn't going to be covered by the metal strip, I really would not have done it like this. Please bear this in mind if you're cladding a boiler that doesn't have a metal strip across the top. The infill piece of mahogany that I made was a bit too long, so I chopped this off. Then I tried to fit the ring, and it was a tight fit. The white mark on this piece of mahogany that I've just touched with my thumb is just one of the points where the elastic bands got stuck to the mahogany with the adhesive. Returning to the fiddly bits, the ones at the other side didn't really need much of an infill piece. Once the cyano adhesive had grabbed, I simply sanded across the gap, which filled it in perfectly. As the three bushes on the top of the boiler are much larger than the one on the side, I used a larger drum sander to trim the mahogany. You will notice that I'm holding the piece of mahogany at an angle. This is to make sure that it clears the fillet of silver solder around the bushes. This may not be obvious, but it's quite important. After I fitted the last piece, just as you've previously seen, I used a piece of emery cloth to sand it, which filled the gap. Now it's time to go outside into the garden. It's a lovely day, and I'm sat at my picnic bench. I'm using my small orbital sander to clean up the mahogany, and also reduce it in diameter that is so the first boiler band that's at the smoke box end, which is a special shape, will fit perfectly. I'm also smoothing out the levels of all of these pieces of mahogany strip because they vary quite a lot. Not all of these mahogany strips are the same, but after a good rub down with the orbital sander, they're all more or less the same now. 
The orbital sanding job took a while. This was only a brief excerpt from it. The rest of it is handwork. The usual thing. Apply some cyanoacryl adhesive, wipe it off with a cloth, use some coarse emery cloth to create small pieces of mahogany that fall into the gap and get stuck in place by the cyano. When I videoed the process of doing it on the top of the boiler, I didn't use the cyano. So the vibration of the orbital sander opened the gap up again. This time I filled the gap with cyano and now it should be permanent. I thought I'd better mention I'm using 100 grit emery cloth for the first rubbing down and 135 grit emery cloth for the second rubbing down where I go with the grain. This gives quite a good finish to the surface of the mahogany but I don't want it that good yet. Finally I rub down the entire boiler with the 135 grit and every time I find a gap I do this which gets rid of the gap back to the 100 then a final rub with the 135 grit emery cloth and eventually the boiler looks like this. The first coat of varnish is applied with a cloth like the rest of the coats will be but I didn't clean the boiler so the boiler is actually covered in sanding dust. This will mix with the first coat of varnish and get swept into any more gaps that are found on the boiler. After this first coat of varnish is thoroughly dry and thoroughly hard I will rub it down. I'm being careful not to get any varnish on the black painted parts. Although it's not the end of the world if I do because I probably will give these parts another coat of paint. While I was doing this job sat in the garden on a nice sunny day some garden creature decided to bite my hand. I don't mean a big creature like a tiger or a lion. Some minute insect or bug bit me on the hand and now part of my hand is swollen and it's very annoying. It is quite amazing that something that's possibly a billion times smaller than me can cause so much damage. One day last year I went out metal detecting with my daughter and the insect bite that I received on that day has left a nice scar on my arm. Manchu, I must admit I did try a bit of DIY surgery to remove what was in there, which is probably not the smartest thing I've ever done. Once I'd wiped on a good coat of varnish all over the mahogany strips, I turned the boiler on its end and used a paintbrush to varnish the ends of the wood. This is quite important and it's easily overlooked, and once you finish your boiler you will notice it, and then you'll have to do it anyway. This is a rubbish paintbrush, it's one a friend of mine gave me, and it loses more hair than I do. To finish this video, here's a gratuitous shot of the varnish drying, with the boiler sat on the picnic table in the garden enjoying a bit of sun. And that concludes this episode, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.